Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again. It's your boy Stalin One, as you always know, and I am here with another episode as I always do it for you guys. And today's episode is episode 12, uh, 13 of my videos uh, of my journey to Europe. And this is the final episode of my journey to Europe. So as I told you in the previous episode, that is episode 12, the way I reach Tripoli. So on my reaching Tripoli, on, on my reaching Tripoli was a very, very tough time for me because all my mind was just now on how to move from Tripoli and reach Europe, that is Italy, where I am presently. So this is how the time I reach at that, uh, at a point where migrants were sitting, then we make a contact that my brother spoke with the Arab guys, then the, 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 the Arab taxi driver told him that, yeah, I know that place, which is the place that I was stay, I went to stay is called Sitas. Sitas. Uh, so that Sitas, I went there. My brother also came out and met with these people. It's not my brother himself who came for me. He sent one of his friends to come and collect me because my brother was walking. And uh, one of his friends come and meet with the driver at the Johnson. So the driver, they paid the money and I get down. From the vehicle we went to the house it was a very tiring day and we spent uh, i don't know three days before reaching tripoli we spent three days three nights before reaching tripoli so this was how uh, i read to that place he was a welder man i never saw him but i was told that there was one one family member of mine that i should go to so i never saw him i never know him because we never know, knew each other so I read there and I meet him with some three guys from different countries, but you know, neighboring countries, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, but we all are inter, we all have interrelations. So this was how I was there with them. Then I start to, he was a welder man, and I start to follow him to be doing weldering. But unfortunately, my doing weldering was was something terrible for me because I just entered it. I don't know anything about welding. I started, then we are doing things and I'm going with them to work and come back. I don't used to go out to start for work for myself because he was there. Then I used to go with him. Then we were there. The other one is a mechanic that is the generator repairer. Uh, it's, a, it's a Gambian Guinea Bissau, I can say, it's like that. So the other one is working as a tile man. So he was there with the other guy uh, who could be my age mate. They were working as welder, welder men. So I was there with these people. And I used to go with them welding, come back, do this, do that. One day he traveled, he went to work some other place, we were there. And me and the other boy, there was one seat, one chair that spoiled. I said, I also I will make this one. So this was how I just take the the machine. I own everything. I take the baguette and put it there. Then I start. But the specs that I was putting on doesn't value. I don't know what was the reason. But the thing get into my eyes that day. I can tell you guys, three days I don't come out from my house, from the house I was in. I don't come out because anytime they on light me I used to cry if they off light I open my eyes I go outside I want to go and urinate or take something outside I will cry because that time I don't need light anything that is light I don't need it because when it lights my eyes used to bring water and it used to pain me so much I would just cry like a baby but that three days when that is finished I told my brother that I'm no more going to continue with welding. I'm okay, it's not my part. So I was there like that. There was one guy also Senegalese, then he paid his money to go to Europe. Uh, he pays his agent, then the agent called him, he went there. Then for him he went, because he was working with that Gambian guy at uh, generator repairing in their uh, works, workshop. Then I told the man that told uh, tell your boss if he would like me to come and work there. So because the other one have left, 
So this was how I was lucky. Lucky he went and told his boss. The boss said he can come and start even now. Now, that was how I just undressed that day. I start job there as a generator repair. I was there with them. I worked for one month. And then the boss knew that I am fast in learning. He told me now anything you make. I will just remove the uh, the parts of my properties, which mean the uh, the parts that were changed, the fair of the part that were changed. I will just remove it. There, then the rest is yours. That was how I start stubbornness to repair people generator. Then, if I repair any generator, if you repair any generator, you will write it the amount on the. He will tell you to write this amount on top of it. If it is fifty dinar, know that if he will remove twenty dinar for his spare parts, then the thirty dinar is yours. Then that was how I was doing it, and there was one man Arab guy. He taught me how to open the big, big, big generators and re re reclose them again, because those one any spare part you remove you have to know where you remove it all the electric you have to fix them for yourself so that one also taught me all those ones and those ones also happen to be my hobby every time they bring the big ones i would like to work on the big ones than the small ones the small ones are easier to make but i want to know more about the big generators i want to know more about those ones but because the small ones those ones are just easy I was able to do everything by my own so this was how I worked there then after the end of 2014 after the end of 2014 then on the 9th uh, I can say on the 8th is it 8 or on the no before that I called the agent that took the first guy I told him that whether there is an order come back, he told me yes. But that time my brother traveled. He said that you can come tomorrow. Then I called my brother, my brother said he traveled. Uh, he's not coming today. I said, uh, I told the man that now let us forget about it. Till next you can call me when there is another one. Then that was how the following week, that was on the 10th of February. On the 10th of February, he called me. He said that there is a... There is a boat going on the thirteenth. Will you come? I said yes, of course. No, he said on the eleventh. There is a boat going. Then I came there. I moved from where I went to my brother. I told him that I need my money, the one I gave you, so that I can go and pay. This was how I have all my fare to go and pay. Then my brother prepared everything and gave me the money and take a taxi and pay the taxi driver. No. Because you know you don't pay them directly if not they can do anything they want. He just say if you read there that man will give you the money. So this is how the taxi driver took took me up to that place. He reached me a, a place he want to get me down there. I said no, I cannot step down there because I have been hearing that place name, which is Bruce Lim. I don't know. I never stay at Bruce Lim. So I just heard of that problem in that place. Because for me to be frank, where I was staying, there was no problem. I never encountered any problem or any attack on the road there in Tripoli. But the other place, people are just running because others will run from their place to come to where my brother is staying. Those who know my brother, they used to come there and stay with him because there is too much of problem there. So this was how I read there. Then the man was a Guinea-Bissau agent. He took me to his house. I slept there in the morning. They take us to where all the people that should go to the connection house. They call us all. We all went there. So this was how we were there in the connection house. The day we reached at the connection house, my brothers, we met the ozone was not stable. The sea was just wild because the room where we are sitting is just like we are sitting here, just 50 meters between us and the ozone there is a room there the this wood room everything is wood so we are sitting there in that place then the, that was how we were there for i don't know we spent one day one day because that day we cannot go but they said we must go but between themselves they start to argue no the sea is not stable when they go it something may happen to them so they start to argue among themselves, then they now agree that we will not go that day. Then the following morning, the same thing again. 
the same thing happened. But they were seen, there are people who always watch the weather, uh, told them that the weather for this morning till later, uh, later in the evening it will not be steady. But later in the evening it will be steady. Then the man, that is, I forget the name, that man said, it was in Grigaras. I don't know, I forget the name of the place. Is it Grigaras or Grigaras? Yes, that place we were. Then he told us that the man came, very wicked guy. He came and told us that either death or cross, we are going that night. We are going. Then they start, start to search us. Because when you have trousers that have button behind, that have something that can point the viper of the boat, they will not allow. They will say, they will check everything. If you have it, it's either you remove your trouser or you cut, they cut all the buttons from your trouser so that you don't bust the boat on the way because it's a long journey. This was how they search everything. They remove everything from us. One guy was there, it can be a guy. The time of searching and uh, the man, if, if the man is talking, you respond, it's a problem. You should not respond. So that Gambian guy just respond, he just take a pistol and say, come here. Near that boy's ear, he just blow the pistol. Uh, I was very afraid that time. Very, very afraid. That boy was there for almost, almost two to three hours. That boy cannot even hear if you call him. He cannot hear anything. So, because of the blown of the cone near his ear, I don't know whether his ear is not spoiled or what, but it was terrible. Then it came to around 11, I think 12, midnight. Then they start to tell us that let us prepare, we go. Then we were there, we prepared. Then our, our group was the first group to go. Our group was the first group to go. But we become the last group to enter air to be rescued. There were five boats that left that day. Five boats that left that day. Then we were the first people to go and we, we, we become the last people to, to be rescued. So this was how we were. Where we put our boat inside the water. The water throws us. Everyone with the boat outside. Then they start to take sticks. When you are putting that boat in the water, you are the people who are going to carry the boat and put it in the water. Then with beating is going. You must participate in putting that boat in the water. Then it, they will take it up to a distance, maybe 10, 10 or 5 meters. Then you, you people will go and climb and enter. Uh, me, I just, I never know how to swim. I don't know what to do. So that was how we enter in the boat. Then they push. They will go with one, one, uh, one guy or two people will join you. That is the divers the people who know how to do, uh, take a uh, swim in the water they are people they, those people will put on their things then they will accompany us for more than uh, 50 meters i can say 50 or 100 meters they will accompany us then they will say they will just leave themselves in the water tell us the safe journey we go that night since we reach 100 meters <laughs> there everyone start to say start to pray either muslim christian we all have only one prayers that time we all have one one prayers because we all know there there is no way again only dead or god can save us from getting out of that place that was how we went and we spent one night in that journey we spent one full night in that journey to reach for, uh, to the rescue team and because we reach uh, in the international sea at 6 in the morning early morning 6 we reach in the international sea then our captain called the rescue team and they told us that we should stay so we should stay there they are coming in two hours we say what two hours because when you off the boat the water is taking you back you cannot stop then our captain said, no, we have to go, my brothers. Confusion in the boat. When you see the sea, how it is, the wave of the water is coming on top of your boat. You will think that you are coming to sink. Trust me. Then thank God to our captain. He was very good. I give him, 
a big thank for that one because he saved our life. He know how to ride the boat too, and he helped us. Then we went because most people will quarrel inside the boat too, but our captain will make us afraid that he will off the boat and tell us that if we don't keep quiet or we don't do this thing, he's going, everyone is going to die there. So that was how we were lucky to cross the sea in safely. But we were rescued around 5 in the evening. 5 in the evening we were rescued. So the time we were rescued, water started to fall. This was how we were lucky and we were safe. We spent another night in the big ship, rescued him, then we reached Italy safely. This was how my journey is. This is how I traveled this journey to come to Europe. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you very much for your support. I am so blessed. I am so happy. And I hope you all enjoy my this journey to Europe. See you again.